Hello everyone, it's Avenil. Welcome back to another episode of the Lobster Helpers. I'm here today again with Actually as a Lobster Guy, and we're going to take a look at how I was able to tell whether he was moving or not. Now, there's a few things we need to cover before we can explain it, but first I want to talk about why it was actually an issue to animate an uh, armor stand that was getting teleported to a creeper. So to show that, I'm going to spawn in a villager right here with a zombie. I'm going to go ahead and teleport that villager around. So we'll TP at E type equals villager. We'll say a radius of, what, 15. Uh, and we'll just teleport him to me. If I can type. There we go. And you'll see that the zombie is just instantly following him around. And he's always going to pursue this villager no matter where it goes, right? He's never going to stop and think about whether he's pursuing him or not. As soon as the villager moves, the zombie moves. And there's never a period where the zombie will stop when he's not near the villager. Now I made him stop a little bit further away using the no AI tag, but it's the important thing to realize about the luxury of using a zombie is you can always tell when the zombie is moving because if he's not within a certain radius of the villager where you've turned his AI off, he's going to be moving. So why is that different with a creeper? Well, if we spawn a creeper in over here, I forgot to put a button down, we'll just spawn in a silent creeper. And what you're going to notice is right now he's on the other side of the thing. So if I go into game mode two, he's going to end up blowing me up when he pursues me. Let's go back into game mode one. Uh, we'll actually let him out here to show this example. So he's following me right now, right? But if I turn around and I sprint away, I can get out of his range really quickly. And now he's not pursuing me anymore. So the creeper is not really going to pursue anything else but a person, which is why I had him actually follow you. But he has the potential to stop when he's not nearby you. And with the animation I had set up for the zombie, the way that would would have worked is I would be looking out right now and I would see actually as a lobster guy by that creeper and he would still look like he was walking. Obviously, we couldn't have that because that wouldn't make sense. So I needed to figure out a way to teach Minecraft to know whether a creeper was moving or not. This proved to be really difficult and to do it as I used that silverfish down there uh, before we can understand that, however, I need to make sure you guys understand how fill clock works, so we're gonna go talk about that now. Alright, I'm looking at a fill clock right now, you guys see me use these in just about every episode, and the point of the fill clock is it sets a certain area of blocks to redstone block, and then back to stone, uh, 20 times a second, so the commands for that are sitting here, you have fill, relative coordinates, so 1 up in the Y, 10 over in the X, it's filling it with stone on the bottom one. If we do this, you can see that. And then the top one is filling it with redstone blocks afterwards. So you can see that if I do that. Well, you won't see that because there we go. That one was a little slower. It triggers the bottom one here. So if we wanted it to just stay redstone blocks, we could do that. Okay, so let's get it started again. You can see that it's firing over and over again. And we can actually see how quickly that's firing if we just say whatever we'll say a period you can see how fast it's firing if i type something else in chat you can just watch that scream by so we'll take that off we'll clear that stuff off the screen uh so how does the fill clock choose what order it's going to do things you would think initially that it does everything on the strip at the same exact time but it actually doesn't it does them in a predefined order and that order is based on two things the first thing it's based on is X, Y, and Z. It's gonna pick the X direction first, the Y direction second, and then the Z direction third, if it has to distinguish, say, what's on one of these redstone blocks. And the second thing it checks for is the direction. So it's gonna pick X, for, it's gonna bias towards X first, and it's gonna go from negative to positive in all of these. So that means this clock runs from here over in order. And then the second direction is Y, so it would prefer bottom to top next. And then the third thing it would look at is the Z direction, which is that side to this side. So to prove that here, I have 
uh, four command blocks that just have say one, say two, say three, and say four in them. And so we can actually show this here. So I'm gonna lay these down here. You see one comes up, two, three, and four. And you notice how it's coming up in order every single time. Now, I can also prove this to you by reversing them to make sure that it's not a fluke. Put the one there, two there, three there, four there. And now you notice in chat that it says four, three, two, one over and over. So now you know for sure that it's moving across in this direction. And then we said that it goes from Y next and it goes from the bottom to top. So there's one, two, and then it picks Z after that. So it goes from the negative Z over there to the positive Z over here. And you can see that it is then running in that order. So we know all that. So how do we apply that into our commands? Well, we have the actual clock that runs actually as a lobster guy over here. And I've marked with yellow wool here the different commands that control whether he's walking or not. So certain things had to happen in a certain order. Uh, I guess first let's take a look at what uh, actually is a lobster guy does when he's walking. So you can see here he's walking around you'll notice the silverfish is lagging a little bit behind him when he's walking. This is intentional and it runs on this clock here. It's just a hopper clock. You have an item going back and forth and there's a comparator output coming out of it. And every time this fires, it's teleporting C actual S, which is the silverfish, to C actual, which we know is the creeper. So it's only teleporting him once every time the hopper clock fires. And so if I come down here and I go into game mode two again, you can see as he pursues me that the silverfish is just trailing after him about a block at a time based on the rate that he's walking. It's pretty easy to watch the silverfish jump around a block at a time. Now this is instrumental to knowing whether actually as a lobster guy is moving or not. If we go back over to the clock here we can see what I'm doing. So the first thing that happens every time the clock fires, the very first thing is it's going to set the creeper's score in an objective called still to zero. So it's always going to be set to zero. Now, because these things fire in a tick, and the game only updates what happens every tick, it chooses these commands in order, so what it, the first thing it does is it sets it to zero. However, right after that, it's going to execute on that silverfish, and it's going to do a scoreboard command that sets the creeper, when it's in a radius of zero to the silverfish, it's going to set the still score to one. So now the game running the clock through in this direction, if the creeper isn't on the silverfish, it's going to think it's zero, but if the creeper is on the silverfish, it's going to think it's one. You're not going to see any traces of the zero anywhere in the game when the silverfish is right under the creeper, because this command here is second. And that's very important, the ordering in this uh, is what matters a lot. Now we look at this one here, and this is the final piece of the puzzle. Uh, it's an extra objective that I called still count. Now what this is doing is it's checking to see how long the silverfish has been right underneath the creeper. If you just had the animation go to the still animation every time the silverfish was under the creeper, it wouldn't have worked because it would have looked like the guy was stopping and gliding every, you know, half a second or three quarters of a second however fast the hopper clock is so we needed an extra objective to try to fake the way around that and this still count as that objective so if you look here anytime the score of still is one or or greater so it's at least one uh it's gonna start adding on this still count objective so anytime that silverfish is right under the creeper it's gonna start counting that still count and now over here, it's trying to pose uh, this guy with an entity data command, but it's running this command on the creeper as an execute command, and it's trying to find a creeper with a still this creeper with a still count that's at least seven. So if the game detects the silverfish underneath the creeper seven ticks in a row it's going to perform entity data on actually as a lobster guy and it's going to cause him to pose like he's stopped. Now the one other piece of this puzzle is down here on the bottom. It's setting the still count to zero for anyone 
with a still score of zero. So what this does is whenever the creeper gets off from the silverfish, it resets the still counter so you couldn't have it be still for three ticks and then still for another four ticks and have it think that it stopped. Or, you know, add, it adds up one tick at a time. Stuff like that I didn't want to happen. So let's go back over here and we'll watch actually as a lobster guy walking around with a couple different objectives. The first one is the still score. So you see him walking around. Every time he's moving, it's zero, but it turns to one every time the silverfish catches up with him. Let's go to game mode two again. You'll notice it's going to one, back to zero, one, back to zero, over and over again. But that's not the most important thing because the most important thing is that additional objective, which is the still count. So here you can see as he's walking around, if we go, we'll go back into game mode two here and we'll let him out with us. Uh, you can see here that his still count is getting up to about five or six ticks. That's as long as the game is testing for. Uh, the, that's basically the, the margin of error that the game has. So you'll notice it never gets up above seven ticks while he's actually moving. It can never test for that silverfish in that small area for longer than seven ticks. So he's always moving. Now when he stops, you can see as soon as it hits seven there, let's watch again, watch that counter on the side and see it hit seven. And as soon as he hits seven, I'll do it one more time. You watch and you'll see his head tilt to the side. Right there, do it again, right there. And it'll happen every single time consistently because of that. Now while he's standing here, the still count's just gonna go up and up and up until he starts moving again, then it resets back to zero. So that's how I was able to get Minecraft to be smart enough to know whether a mob was moving or not. It does have a slight delay in its accuracy. Right now the accuracy is about a quarter of a second. Uh, it'll be aware of it. You could probably make it go a little bit faster, but honestly, I uh, I tried it and it's it doesn't give a good enough result and it bugs out a lot more. So it's not really worth it. So yeah, and uh, this mechanic was based on, you know, the zombie and villager mechanic not working for this type of scenario because I needed the creeper to run away. It was uh, necessary because the creeper stops when he's not near you. And then I ended up solving the problem with a creeper and a silverfish. Uh, I also explained about fill clocks and then I showed you guys how the commands work in the actual fill clock over there. This is a pretty complicated thing. Anytime you're running commands that need to be you know, appropriately ordered on a fill clock, it's going to be pretty complicated to do. Uh, so please, please, please ask me questions about this. If I didn't do a good job of explaining anything that I did, uh, ask me the questions because I really want to help you guys, you know, gain this knowledge. It's something that uh, it's a concept that if you know how to do really well, you can do things that you didn't previously think were possible. And uh, this uh, lobster guy was actually a result of a pretty good brainstorming session with me and a couple other redstoners just trying to figure out, you know, different ways that you could sense this motion because it's really difficult to do that without a statistic. Uh, so anyways, let me know if you had any questions about today, and uh, whether you do or not, I'll see you next time. I've been Avondale, thanks for watching.